Hello and welcome to another presentation on occupational safety and health management. This presentation aims to help you to develop skills in conducting assessment of risk within your organization by using the HIREC tools. I hope by following closely to this presentation will develop your ability to conduct risk assessment at your workplace or any activities in your daily lives. The case study provides a practical example of how to apply these tools and will help you better understand the risk assessment process. Before we start, please consider subscribing this channel for more videos on occupational safety and health. Before we get started, let's look at some of the definition that we're going to use throughout this presentation. A risk assessment is simply a careful examination of what in your work could cause harm to people so that you can weigh up whether you have taken enough precaution or should do more to prevent harm. A risk assessment is an important step in protecting your workers, protecting your business, as well as complying with the law. Risk assessment should be conducted before workers perform some work which represent a risk of injury or ill health. One of the tools to achieve this objective is HIREC. So, what is HIREC? HIREC is a method of analyzing risk of hazard which is widely used by occupational safety and health practitioner in any fields of industries. The word HIREC itself describes steps in conducting risk assessment. HIREC stands for Hazard Identifications, Risk Assessment, and Risk Control. To make it a complete process, we need to add up a few steps. Okay, let's analyze each step. Before beginning the risk assessment process, you must define the scope of work. What are the tasks that must be assessed? If you need to assess all tasks in your workplace, classify work activities by work area such as division, department, or section. And then start with the critical or high-risk tasks. The next step is to identify the hazard. In order to identify hazard, you need to understand the difference between a hazard and a risk. A hazard is anything that has potential to cause harm. And a risk is the likelihood that the hazard will cause harm to someone. Hazard can be identified as an agent condition or activity that has the potential to cause injury, illness, loss of property or damage to the environment. You can refer to my earlier video on hazard risk and risk assessment as I have explained in detail the concept of hazard and risk. Hazard can be identified by using a number of techniques such as walking around the workplace, and look at what could be expected to cause harm. You can also refer to the accident and illness record or by asking the workers. You need to identify as many hazards as possible for that particular task. Once the hazard has been identified, the risk associated with the hazard must be examined. At this stage, you need to evaluate each identified hazard to determine the level of action required to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. You need to consider two key factors, likelihood and severity of the event happening. Likelihood is defined as the chance of an event actually occurring. The event referred to is any event which may cause injury or harm to a person. Severity is a measure of expected severity should an accident occur. In other words, the amount of damage 
or harm a hazard could create. Judging these two factors is like predicting the future. You can't be really sure. You can only make a best estimate on the basis of the information available. This example explains the relationship between likelihood and severity. The worker's task is to refill glue into a machine container. One of the hazards identified is the container may drop and glue may splash into worker's eyes. To measure the likelihood of the accident that is glue splash, you need to consider these factors. Is the worker has proper grip of the container? Is the container light or heavy? How often the worker has to refill the glue? Does the worker has training or competent to perform the task? To measure the expected severity should the glue splash into the eyes, consider these factors. What is the physical properties of the glue? The more hazardous, the more severe the injury. What is the expected amount of glue to spill? Does the worker wear suitable PPE that is goggle or even better a visor? This PPE can reduce severity of the injury. When making an assessment of likelihood and severity, you need to decide which of the following categories most closely describe the likelihood and severity of the event occurring by referring to the following tables. Each category is assigned with different rating. A risk matrix is a matrix that is used to define the level of risk by considering the category of likelihood against the category of severity. The risk value are determined by multiplying the score for the likelihood and severity values together. The higher the risk value, the greater the overall risk for the task. The level of risk is labeled with three colors. Red represents high risk, rating between 15 and 25. Blue represents medium risk, rating between 5 and 12. And Green represents low risk, rating between 1 and 4. High risk need immediate action to control the hazard, while low risk task is considered acceptable risk and need no further action. Tasks with high risk need to be controlled to prevent accident. The law requires you to do everything as far as practicable to protect workers from harm. One of the most effective tools in the safety toolkit is the hierarchy of risk control, a model that can be used to reduce the risk for any hazard. There are five approaches to risk control. Elimination is where the hazard is removed altogether. Once the hazard has been eliminated, the potential for harm has gone. Substitution involves substitute a dangerous process or substance with the one that presents a lower risk. Examples include substitute lead-based solder paste with non-lead-based ones. Engineering control includes structural changes to the working environment or work process that form an additional protective barriers between the hazard and the workers. Administrative control usually involves modification of the likelihood of an accident occurring. This can be done by reducing the number of people exposed to the danger, reducing the amount of time exposed, and providing procedure, instruction, training to those people who are exposed to the hazard. Personal protection or PPE should always be used as a last line of defense and is an acceptable control method when engineering or administrative control cannot provide sufficient protection. PPE may also be used on a temporary basis while engineering control are being developed. The protection offered by PPE relies on the correct selecting, fitting, and maintenance and use. 
When selecting appropriate measure to control a risk, select a control measure from a high on the hierarchy of control list as practicable. For the assessment case study, I choose a sawmill factory. Basically, there are six main processes involved in this factory. Let's do assessment for molding machine. The six head molding machine blends the edge and surface of the wood to a smooth finish. There are three workers working at this machine. The first workers feed a rough wood in one end and a finished piece of molding comes out the other end. The second workers do measurement of the wood thickness and make necessary adjustment of the machines. The third workers will arrange the finished wood on a pallet for delivery to the next process. During the assessment, we will use this form to record the findings. There are few hazards identified for the molding machine. For the purpose of discussion, I list down only five hazards. The first hazard is rotating motion of the machine part, such as chain, roller, and saw. Rotating motion can be dangerous. It can grip hair, clothing, as well as hand and arms into a dangerous position. These hazards are also referred to as pinch point. Accident can occur when the workers trying to reach something near the rotating parts, causing their clothing to trap between the moving parts. Affected body parts are arms and hands. The severity of injury due to contact with rotating parts can be severe or even fatal. The machine is equipped with a safety sensors that stop the machine function when detecting an entry or present of a person during the machine operation. Every morning before start working, the sensor is tested for its function. The control is part of an engineering control and good enough to protect the workers, so the likelihood of getting an accident is very low. For additional control, a warning sign can be posted at the machine. Risk rating for this hazard can be classified as low 3. Second hazard identified is high noise. The main source of noise comes from the cleaning of wood process. In general, the recommended maximum noise exposure is 85 decibel per 8 hour shift. However, the actual noise level generated during planning is very often higher. To estimate likelihood of accident, you can refer to the noise risk assessment report done by the company. In this case, the actual exposure of the workers is 90 decibels. Workers who are exposed to high noise level even for a short period of time may experience temporary hearing loss. If they continue to be exposed, they will suffer serious permanent hearing loss. The main component of hearing that will damage is hearing cells located deep inside ear. The machine is equipped with enclosure or cover and this creates a barrier between the noise source and workers. The inner layer of the cover is made of sound absorbing materials that can reduce high noise. Good absorbing material can reduce by 20 to 55 decibels, thereby reduce workers' exposure to high noise. Since the worker do not wear any hearing protector, therefore they are exposed to direct noise of 90 decibel. Based on the table, maximum duration the workers can work without hearing protector is only 2 hours. 
since they work for eight hours in a day, the chance of getting loss of hearing in a short period of time is high. Therefore, the severity of injury is high. For recommended control, workers should wear a suitable hearing protector. There are two types of hearing protector, earmuff and earplugs. Hearing protection device reduce noise energy reaching inner ear, therefore prevent loss of hearing. Therefore, when selecting a hearing protector, choose the one that has sufficient noise reduction rate. Risk rating for this hazard can be classified as medium 6. Planning process can also generate wood dust. The workers expose where the dust become airborne during planning process. However, most of the exposure come from the use of a gun to clean the machine. Long-term exposure to dust can cause irritation, allergy, and serious lung disease, including asthma. Body parts that are affected by this hazard is respiratory system that includes nose and lungs. However, this problem is solved with the dust collection system. A dust collection system works by collecting generated dust from the air and environment. Basically, dust is captured or extracted holes to catch dust at its source of origin. Then the dust is conveyed via a ducting system and collected by a dust collector. This is one of the effective methods to control dust hazard. The workers wear respirator that create additional protection from inhaling hazardous dust when properly used. Therefore, the severity of injury is considered low. Risk rating for this hazard can be classified as low to. When handling long and heavy wood, there is a chance that the wood will drop. And this can lead to all sorts of injuries such as broken legs and toes. The weight of one piece of long wood is approximately 30 kilos, so the severity of the injury without personal protection is serious. In this situation, the workers wear safety shoes that are equipped with a steel toe cap. This helps to reduce impact of falling objects on workers' legs, so the severity of the injury should the wood fall is low. Risk rating for this hazard can be classified as low to. Workers need to stand at all times to perform the task. Standing at work for a long period of time is a hazard directly linked to musculoskeletal injuries, mainly of legs and lower back. The workers are not in static posture when performing the task. They move a lot. In addition, the workers wear safety shoes that equip with insoles that provide comfort and eliminate foot pain. So this hazard is not considered a big issue and therefore the risk of injury is low. Risk rating for this hazard can be classified as low to. Like any other safety and health records, you are required to record in writing the main findings of the risk assessment. This record provides proof that the assessment was carried out and is used as a basis for a later review of working practices. All records must be retained as long as the organization is in operations. Records of risk assessment should show the following information. Hazard identified. 
assessment of the risk associated with those hazards, suggested control measures to manage exposure to the risk, and how and when the control measures are implemented. And then you can repeat the same assessment process for other process or tasks in your organization until you complete the whole work activities. To get an overview of the finding, you can come up with a summary of the finding just like this. The summary displays overall risk rating for each work activities. This brings me to the end of my presentation. I wish you all the best in managing safety and health at your workplace. Thank you and see you again.